uh, the thing about this park is one day when I was walking here, there was this weird, like, crackhead looking guy. Oh, wow. And he just started. One time I was, uh, uh, left school for my lunch break because that's who I can leave whenever I want for my lunch break. And, um, I went by a tunnel and I saw a bunch of these people smoking crack down there. And uh, they saw me, and then they kind of, one of them just ran up. So I just kind of quickly ran away because I guess I was like a witness, sort of. Because this was before pot was legalized in Canada, so they were basically were breaking the law. Uh, that's crazy. I mean, yeah. I know there's some drug problems in my school. Yeah, my school actually is a big problem with people smoke because vape uh, is, is not allowed in, in the school. So they, they actually have a problem with people going into washrooms and smoking vape there because because the school is not allowed to have security cameras in the washroom. Yeah. Yeah, as I said before, it's it's all it's all a cycle. You know, when there's when you have a secular worldview, it always goes back to hedonism. Yeah. That's why you have all these all this drug addiction. Yeah. Like it's kind of funny how, how the school it's very secular and, and like they, they, they ban things like, you know, drugs and alcohol, which is good. I think it's good. They ban that, but you know, it's like, but the question is where are they getting this morality from though? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But when you really dissect it, uh, if they were consistent, then nothing means anything and there's really no morals. Oh yeah. So yeah, it is hypocritical. Yeah. It's funny. I mean, and like I said, I think it's good. They ban drugs and alcohol and, and that kind of stuff and smoking. But, you know, just, yeah. Yeah, but if they were logically consistent, then they would realize that they're being hypocritical. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's what's so funny about it. When when they try to make these sort of moral arguments, yeah. they can't substantiate it. Like, it's kind of funny. That they'll, they'll have, like, these, these talks in, in, in assemblies against drugs and against, um, you know, alcohol, which is good. It's good they're against it. But then, like, you know, they're hypocrites because they don't, you know, like, where's this morality coming from? I mean... Because in atheism, there is no source for their morality. Exactly. Exactly. I would ask them, I would say, so if you're making any moral statement, then you presuppose some sort of universal, you know, moral standard, yeah. which obviously they don't think exists. So yeah. then they're, they're contradicting themselves. Yeah. So, and then, then it kind of, well, yeah, exactly. They're contradicting themselves. Because here's... I mean, really, like, really, it's so, it's so easy to just destroy their worldview because it's so contradictory you know on one hand they say all truth is empirical and on another hand they say but there's no absolute truth well yeah, in exactly. saying that all truth is empirical you just contradicted yourself yeah exactly and like they'll make fun of you for having faith in god but yet when you ask him for proof of evolution exactly. it's like asking for proof of that they'll say uh i don't know well then that means they believe it by faith because they have no, they haven't seen any proof they, they're believing it by faith so you know they're contradicting themselves exactly yeah exactly yeah also they also they have faith that morals exist when they presuppose good and evil by making any moral statement yeah. if you call anything evil you presuppose the existence of evil so i mean there you go it's yeah, just exactly. when you really think about it it's so easy to just completely destroy them yeah and i think it is interesting how most atheists it's interesting how they attack christianity more than any other religion you know it kind of shows the kind of sort of spirit they're of exactly. they, they, they'll attack like I, I go through the channels is like it's like all about, and they'll have some stuff about islam and hinduism here and there but it's like always like mostly just against christianity it's interesting exactly it's yeah. because well first of all I, I think that gives the most credence the yeah. most vindication for christianity yeah because it's easy to refute Islam and that kind of stuff, but you know it's hard. To exactly, yeah. it's so easy. Yeah, it's like it's like a walk in the park. Yeah, Any, anyone could because it's just simply reading the Quran. It contradicts itself many in many places. Exactly. I mean, also this this supposed this man who is supposed to embody virtue and purity, and he's supposed to be the perfect human example. I mean, this man was a pedophile who had a ton of wives yeah. and he slaughtered people. Well, yeah, exactly, yeah. So basically, yeah, the, the prophet of their religion debunks itself, <laughs> debunks yeah. his own religion. Yeah, exactly. Because of how morally reprehensible. And it, it's kind of funny how atheists, I've seen these atheists, they'll, they'll say that, that, like, they'll condemn Islam for being founded by a pedophile, but then they support homosexuality, which can lead to pedophilia. So, like, they're not consistent. 
exactly yeah it, it's also like, yeah as i said just to begin with they can't make any moral arguments yeah because according to their worldview everything is relative yeah it's, it's like if you support homosexuality you might as well just support pedophilia because they're basically the same thing exactly exactly oh it's hmm, there's someone walking by me i'm just gonna wait a bit okay basically one leads to the other every single time yeah Mo- most like kids who are Kids who are like molested and messed up, and their minds are corrupted, they usually become pedos or or homos. Yeah, and obviously, you know, you have the public school, you know, who's who is trying to turn them into gay and fags, and um, you know, they try and teach them it, that this is normal and that kind of stuff. You know, it's it's, you know, that that kind of that obviously plays a factor as well. Yeah, yeah, no, at my school, at my school. I was forced to take this class, like this sexual reproduction class, whatever it was called, health class. This, you know, totally, totally evil, twisted stuff that they're teaching. And they force you to, they force you to say good things about this. And they basically yeah. just shove it down your throat. Yeah. It, 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 and it's like, and if you say, hey, I don't agree with this, they'll just say, oh, then you're, you're just a hateful person if you don't agree with it. Exactly. Yeah. If, if you don't endorse, if you don't support their, their opinions, then they'll just throw a bunch of buzzwords at you that yeah, don't really mean anything. It's funny, the conservatives will do the same thing. Like, if you don't support Israel, well, you're anti-Semitic. You're hateful. You're a Jew hater. That kind exactly. Of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Fox, Fox Jews. That was a yeah, good Fox one. Jews. i got to use that one at school. Well, exactly. I mean, I mean, the conservatives, they're, they're, in my opinion, they're just as bad as liberals. I mean, if you don't support Israel, then they, like, they'll use the anti-Semitic canard just to shut you down. Exactly. I mean, also... Also, though, none of them are real Christian parties. Neither yeah, exactly. of them. I mean, they'll, they'll profess the... Christianity, but, like, you know, any real Christian knows that Israel is a very wicked place, and, and no Christian has any business supporting Israel when they persecute Christians and they ban preaching the gospel and all this other stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, if, if there was a real politician who came out, or if, sorry, if there was a politician that came out and he started saying... <clears throat> You know, um, hold on, gotta wait for a moment. <laughs> okay, and he really stood up for, like, traditional values and stuff like that, and he was against, you know, fighting wars for Israel. Yeah. And he wanted to push back against all this decadence, and he would be considered insane, and no one would vote for him, because the politicians have just completely, completely gone off, uh... I mean, they've just abandoned all, all traditional values. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, like, you hear Trump, I, I hear Trump saying that, you know, hey, I'm pro-life, but it's like, he talks about being pro-life and says, yeah, I'm against abortion. He speaks against abortion, but it's like, when he, when the Republican Party controlled this, the Senate and the Congress, they did nothing to stop abortion. It's like, like, you had the opportunity, you controlled the House and the Senate, and it did nothing. Exactly. I, I, as I said, it's all just, it's all just... Uh, sophistry. Yeah. It's just they say one thing to get elected, but yeah, they don't exactly. really mean it. Yeah. They just want to appeal to their base. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, because, I mean, and obviously I did hear that the Republicans did veto a lot of pro abortion Democrat bills, but, I mean, that that's good, but, like, but they should have also used that opportunity to pass lots of pro abortion um, Republican bills. And then now, like, it's only now that Trump begins to start signing some anti abortion bills, but they can't get passed now because the Democrats won't allow it. The Democrats, sorry. Yeah. Just, just all the, just, I, I honestly don't think there's a political solution because just neither, neither of the, both of the political parties are satanic. Yeah, but at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. I would agree with that. I mean, you know, like, the Republican Party, like, I would say that they are a bit, bit better than Democrats, but in terms of like, they're both pretty much wicked, in my opinion. I mean, you know. Yeah, no, I would say, I would say, if not all, or, yeah, if not all, uh, 99% of Congress people are, are definitely going to hell. Yeah. They're, they're anti-Christian, they don't support traditional values. Yeah. Well, to be honest, I actually do strongly believe that in order for someone, because you know how Satan's called the god of this world, right? Well, I strongly believe that in order for someone to get into a certain level of political power, they have to actually worship Satan to get to, like, a certain level of power. I would say that's the same with Hollywood. I mean, they're, they're not going to let a true, you know, Bible-believing, righteous Christian get into power. Yeah. Because that would, 
that would completely shake up their their political paradigm. Oh, yeah, it would exactly. just ruin everything. I mean, did you hear Hollywood actually is trying to boycott uh, Georgia because of this bill they passed that would ban abortions uh, when a heartbeat is t- detected from the fetus? Uh, Hollywood was trying to ba- trying to boycott Georgia because of this anti-abortion law they passed. Yeah, I heard about it. Dude, Holly, wait, did you say Hollywood? Yeah, Hollywood. I call it Hollywood. That, that, that's more fitting. Yeah, dude, it's just, dude, Hollywood is just, I don't understand how any Christian can watch Hollywood. I don't understand it. Yeah, I used to watch a lot of Hollywood stuff, and, and to be honest, like, I, I, I go to a, t- I, at school. Oh, I have... oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, my battery's at, like, 4%. It, it went down in five minutes from, like, 40% to 4%, so mm. I might... My stuff might run out, and then I might come back. Okay, sure. Anyway, Zach. I'll just wait. You can just disconnect, and I'll wait for you. Uh, the, the thing is, the thing is, I'm in the middle of the park, so oh, right, 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 right. I'm gonna have to walk all the way home. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So just, yeah, just keep talking until it runs out. I don't yeah, know. sure. I'll, I'll just, yeah. But anyway, I was saying that that. Uh, Think about Hollywood or you know Jewy wood as I call it because it's run by the you know hook nose wannabe so called Jews. Um, yeah, they they pump. I mean, I I, I take a Comtech class and they have some of the recent Hollywood films as like a screensaver and they're just like blatantly wicked, all about Satan and, and hell and like you know glorifying demons. It's like they're just blatantly wicked now. These Hollywood films. Yeah, if you um. Yeah, I've I've seen a lot of film analysis where there's just a bunch of, you know, occultist symbols. Yeah. You know, all these satanic themes that they're integrating into the films. Yeah. You know, they have all these, they have all these faggot protagonists. Yeah, exactly. Just sick of this crap. Exactly, and, and most of these Hollywood actors, I've done some research. Most of them actually have admitted they talk to devils. They like get their inspirations for their films and that kind of stuff. I mean, look look at look at all the films. Look what sorts of messages they promote. Yeah. It's all about, you know, uh, I, it's just, it's just, they all promote. Yeah, it, know, they, they the, promote wicked stuff, you know, it's all about, and, and like, you know, even the, like Disney, oh, by the way, Disney's very wicked. I mean, Disney uh, is full of all kinds of, of like. Oh, yeah, yeah, Disney's rotten to the core. Yeah, yeah, Disney. The hell with Disney. Yeah, it's, it's wicked. I mean, um, like, like, uh, like, it's full of magic and witchcraft and, and feminism and just like. Paganism. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know what they're trying to teach kids? They're trying to teach kids that, you know, it's cool to be a sorcerer. It's cool to practice. Yeah, exactly. All this occultist nonsense. Yeah. I, I mean, it, I mean, Disney is even called the magic kingdom and that's a problem right there. Magic kingdom. Yeah. And then also, you yeah, just. Maybe his phone battery died. Yeah, his phone battery probably died. But anyway, yeah, so Hollywood, you know, it's full of all kinds of Satanism and, and, and that kind of stuff. It's full of, you know, it's um, full of all kinds of sorcery and, and feminism and all that kind of stuff. It's, uh, you know, Disney is, it promotes, uh, like, rebellion against authority all that kind of stuff. It's just um, very, very wicked. Uh, so don't, if you're a parent, don't let your kids watch Disney. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, I'm trying to think of, I, sorry, I didn't have any notes written down. But yeah, it's full of, um, you know, just uh, rebellion. You know, they promote, like in the new Elsa, in the new Frozen film, they're trying to turn Elsa into a lesbian, a dyke, basically. Um, they're trying to, you know, um, promote, you know, Jews and, and hook nose Jews and all this other stuff. Uh, it's just very, very wicked. Uh, very, very, uh, anti-God organization. And, uh, like I said, many of the Hollywood, um, uh, actors have openly admitted that they talk to, uh, demons like Robin Williams, Michael Landon, all these guys, they openly admit that they talk to demons, basically. And, uh, but, like, but, you know, 
the thing about serving the devil is that once he's done with you, he just throws you away. You know, once he's done with you, he just uh, casts you out, and you sorrow over what you've become. You, you sorrow. You. Uh, it's not godly sorrow. It's the sorrow of the world. And the Bible says the sorrow of the world worketh death. In fact, I'll just show you the uh, verse while I wait for him to get back on the thing. The sorrow. I'll show you the verse. It says the sorrow of the world worketh death. Because when Robin Williams, uh, here's the thing is that is that once Satan was done using Robin Williams, uh, Robin Williams didn't uh, have godly sorrow. He sorrowed over the world. Or a good example of this would be Judas. You know how how you know the Bible says that Satan entered into Judas. Um, godly sorrow. Uh, so, so Satan he entered into Judas, and uh, Judas was. Simply just being used by Satan. Here it is, uh, for Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse number ten. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. You see, godly sorrow leads you to repent and turn to God. But if you have the sorrow of the world, like like Judas had, it works death. And what did Judas do? He hung himself. He committed suicide, just like how Robin Williams hung himself. And. Uh, yeah, and, and one thing Robin Williams and Judas both have in common is that they're, they're, they're both in hell right now. Um, yeah, Judas and Robin Williams, they are both in hell. And, you know, they'll say, rest in peace, Robin Williams. Well, there is no peace for the wicked. There is no peace for uh, those people in hell. You know, um, you know I, 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 you know, I do wonder if mocking God ever went through Robin Williams' mind. Well, you know, I'm sure it is now. But it probably never went through his mind on earth. But like I said, it's probably mocking God's probably going through his mind now. You know, there's no games in hell. There's no joking in hell. There's no mocking at God in hell. There's no laughing in hell. Only torment, for, only torment for all of eternity. There's no, you know, uh, making jokes about God. There's no mocking at sin. Only tormented by fire for all of eternity. Yeah. I, you know, to, to be honest, I feel that Robin Williams is more of a believer now than he ever was. You know, I, I imagine he's more of a believer than anybody now. Uh, you know, same thing with Judas. He's probably more of a believer than anybody. Same thing with Stephen Hawking as well. He probably believes more than anybody. And I, obviously, I get no joy out of saying that, but, you know, it's the truth. This way. So... Trying to think of something to go on about. Uh, yeah, but I, I imagine that Robin Williams is more of a believer than he believes in God now more than anyone. Probably believes in a lot. Um, trying to think of some scripture to go to. Uh, sorry, I didn't. This wasn't planned. We weren't planning on just cutting out right there. But okay, uh, sorry, I haven't thought of, any, thought of anything to say. Sorry, this is this is not going as planned. But uh, yeah. So I think I might just stop the recording and wait for him to get back. Hey. Yeah. Yeah, so um, earlier my phone, uh, this is a really crappy iPhone 5. It just sort of died. Oh, okay. And then I had to walk home in a mobile line, so that was nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyways, uh, where were we before my phone died? I think we were talking about Disney, Yeah, we were right? talking about Disney and how they're promoting all this wicked stuff and everything. Yeah, yeah. As I said, anyways, I'm an, you know, I'm... I'm an older teenager, so I'm not interested in, you know, Disney cartoons to begin with, but well, yeah. that's, that's why it's such a problem because it's tailored towards children. Well, yeah, exactly. That's what makes it, you a know, problem. children are, yeah. Yeah. You know, dad, I, I just can't imagine being a kid nowadays and growing up, you know, watching all these, you know, secular TV shows and movies are just totally. Yeah, you just cut out. Oh, uh, what was the last thing? I 
I remember when I used to watch Disney films when I was um, really, really young. I used to watch um, a lot of Disney films. Uh, looking back at those films, I could see tons of, of subliminal messaging in those films. Yeah. Um, but what, what was one of the films where you noticed it the most? Well, see? I think in The Lion King, that one had – that one had – I mean pretty much every Disney film was full of that kind of stuff. But The Lion King was most notable. Like in one scene in The Lion King, it shows the bird kind of flying. And like in the background, it shows two hills. Uh, and so it's like these bushes on top of the hills that actually resemble tits. And the hill, hills resemble boobs basically. So it, it was like very subliminally in there. <laughs> Dang, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I don't quite remember that scene, but well, I know they, they yeah. you know, def, Disney likes to sneak it in where kids yeah. don't know what it is; they're just programming them to accept it. Yeah, exactly. Like, like you don't see it, but it goes into your subconscious, basically. Yeah. Now, now Disney's just blatant with that. Have you? Yeah, exactly. I know you're you're probably older, so you don't know, but have you seen any of these Disney TV shows? Oh yeah, exactly. They're, I've seen some of them. They're just they're blatantly wicked now. Exactly. They have all these, you know, homo protagonists. Yeah. It, it, you know, even for the kids. Yeah. Even for kids shows. Yeah. And, and that's that's what makes Disney so dangerous, like you said, because it's it's geared towards kids. So it's like, uh, and then you wonder why most of these ch most of these people who grow up watching Disney uh, become so wicked when they're adults. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't seen one film, one Disney film that has ever. All the film, all the Disney films that portray Christianity always portray in a negative light. Yeah, exactly. I've never exactly. seen one, one Disney film where they've you know had maybe a protagonist that was a Bible believing Christian. Yeah. Or maybe a pastor or something like that. Well, it seems that with all the Disney films, one of the themes I, I've noticed like a reoccurring theme is there's always a female character, like a young female character, who is in a structured system, and you know a, a structured system of authority, usually at home with their parents, and she always has to break out of that structured system and just go do whatever she wants. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. Exactly. The system is representative of probably traditionalism, yeah. like the nuclear family, like the yeah. old order. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know she's rebelling against her parents. She's symbolically rebelling against God. Yeah. And yeah, and traditional values. Yeah, it's you know that yeah. that's the kind of thought it puts in kids' heads. Yeah, exactly. Like a good example of this would be the film. Um, what's the film? Is uh, uh, Aladdin. You know, in the film Aladdin, how you have that. You know, the girl oh, yeah. who's living <laughs> in a palace, and she's supposed to get married, like her father wants her to, and she keeps like refusing to, to marry anyone. And then this thief comes in, takes her away, uh, sings a whole new world, and that song, a whole new world, actually, ref actually is all about doing what thou wilt. Should be the whole of the law. You know, singing about you know, like you're just gonna do whatever you want, and then he takes her away, a thief. And they end up getting married, so it's like you know teaching rebellion. Like she's in a structured system, and exactly. she has to break out of that system. Yeah, it's always it's always rebellion against the old order, and it's always yeah. uh, there, there's always this theme in Disney films, that, as you said, with like you know out with the old, in with the new. Yeah, you know out with all the old traditions, accept all this new. Yeah, exactly, and, and it's also you know and. To be honest, I mean, I've like every single Disney film I see, I I can like because obviously you know spiritual discernment, I can obviously I like I I I've told my favorite friends that I could, they could I could sit down with them and watch every single Disney film and I could point out to something point out to them something that's wrong with it that I could tell you like every Disney film has something bad about it. Yeah. Oh, have you seen? Um, I I know it's an atrocious film. Maybe you haven't seen. Have you seen uh, Star Wars? I think it was the Last Jedi. I, I haven't seen it, no. No. Okay, well, one of the things they did in this movie is... So you know what the Jedi are, right? Yeah, they're basically just, like... I don't know. I don't know how to word it properly. Uh, they're just the dudes with the lightsabers. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, and, you yeah, know, yeah. They're yeah. The Force and that kind of stuff. So there's yeah. this one scene where... There's this old, you know, there's this structure and it has all these ancient texts that are sort of regarded as sacred. Oh, yeah. And basically what um, the protagonist does, the protagonist just burns all the books and is basically like out with the old, you know, no one cares about that stuff. No one cares about the old traditions. Let's just get rid of all of it. Yeah. And that's basically. Not to mention that stuff. Then, yeah. Go, go ahead. I was going to say also there's this scene where, um, well, you know who Luke Skywalker is, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, anyways, um, so Luke gets his lightsaber back after all this time, and he, he, he wasn't in, you know, he was in Star Wars Episode Six, and then he comes back, you know, it's supposed to be this epic moment where he finally gets his old lightsaber back, and what he does is he basically just, you know, he chucks it uh, off a cliff or something to show, like, oh, the old, the old traditions don't matter, it's all about the new stuff now, so that's kind of a subliminal uh, yeah. theme that they're pushing. Yeah, exactly. Not to mention the main character is a, like a, a feminist kind of female. Oh, yeah, a Mary, a Mary Sue feminist. Yeah. yeah, exactly, yeah. And, and also, another thing about Star Wars is how they have, you know, how the Jedi come back as ghosts and that kind of stuff. And, and you know, yeah, ghosts. Uh, like, that's not good for a Christian to be seeing. Uh, because according to the Bible, when someone dies, they either go to heaven or hell. They don't come back as a ghost. Those are demons that are, come, that are pretending to be ghosts. Yeah, I mean, if if you just overlook the the themes and you just dissect, you know, what the whole Jedi, you know, stuff is, yeah, it's totally, yeah, it's totally anti-Christian. Yeah, and it's totally just nonsense. Yeah, but I don't think, yeah, most people don't take it seriously. But the the themes that are, you know, sort of interwoven into the movies, that's what that's what really gets them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean. If you think about it, the Jedi uh, in Star Wars, it basically just promotes Eastern mysticism, basically, and how it just promotes, like, you know, having to become one with the universe and you know, all this Eastern, you know, Asian mysticism. Oh, yeah, all this modalism BS. Yeah. And, and, and one thing I've kind of noticed is how you, notice how, you notice how Anakin's called, like, the Chosen One or something like that, and notice how he's born of a virgin. Oh, yeah. You notice how he's born of a virgin? A little subtle attack on Jesus right there, born of a virgin, you know, Chosen One, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Early, I thought it was sort of symbolic of the Antichrist. I, I personally think it's just a subtle attack on Jesus, personally. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's just wow. It's just when you really think about it, all these films are just you know totally corrupting young people's minds. Yeah. And I. Uh, but what was the last thing? I uh, like here's the thing about these, these Hollywood films. Is that, uh, oh yeah, go ahead. Oh, what I was gonna say is like you cut off. Oh so. yeah, it, it does that sometimes. It just cuts off. Yeah. So uh, what were you saying? I, I was saying that most of these kids, you know, when, when Christians let their kids watch Hollywood films and then they wonder why their kids become so wicked and, you, you know, they let them watch these films for like eight hours, eight hours every single week. And then they take them to church for one hour each week where they hear some preaching and it just goes in one ear and out the other. Yeah, exactly. Many of these or a problem I see is that I see a lot of people who go to church. And they just don't care about, you know, they don't listen to the sermon. Yeah. They're on their phones. Yeah. They're completely, you know, tuned out. It, yeah. it seems like it's just, they don't go there because they want to improve, because they want to praise God. They go there just because it's like some sort of obligation that they need to fulfill. Yeah, kind of. It, it, it just, yeah, seems like that. I mean, um, like, uh, and it's also kind of interesting how, how many Christians seem to also be celebrating pagan holidays like Halloween and Christmas. It's, it's very interesting. I've noticed that. Exactly, dude. Halloween, dude, it's totally, you know, totally for heathens, Halloween, yeah. like really well, praising like, all these like demons any, and ghosts. Yeah. It's like any research, like basic research shows like the origins of Halloween. Uh, it's a Wiccan holiday. It's a witch, witchcraft, that kind of stuff. It's, it's, it, that's, that's the origins of it. Um, and same thing with Christmas. I mean, any, I've done some research on Christmas and like the whole Christmas tree, all that kind of stuff. It's very, it's pure pagan. Yeah. The, you know, the Santa Claus nonsense. Yeah. Santa Claus. And, and, and that's kind of one of the things where I kind of differ with Steven Anderson on is, is he think that like, I've seen him have Christmas trees and I'm like, but those things are pagan. Like any basic research. So is that that stuff is purely pagan. So, you know, Something I disagree with him on is that the whole Christmas thing. Yeah, yeah, but no, I just can't. I can't believe how any Christian parents would let their. I mean, obviously they don't take their religion seriously. But yeah. Just in general, how do you let your children participate in something like Halloween? Yeah, exactly. You know, as I said, where they dress up as like you know ghosts, yeah. and evil spirits, demons. Yeah. All these, 
you know, all these ungodly things. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and I, I hear some people say, oh, we don't dress up. We just hand out candy. Well, you're still participating in it by handing out candy. I mean, and the, exactly. Bible, the Bible says learn not the way of the heathen. So it's, it's still, you're still, you're still. Saying about, yeah. Like what, when you hand out candy and when you participate in that sort of stuff, you're legitimizing it yeah. and you're actually incentivizing the kids to, you know, come to your house yeah. in these crazy cars. Con- yeah. These, these crazy, like, and some of the costumes are just, just pretty graphic, too. I mean, I, I looked at Walmart, some of these costumes. It's like, they're just like, how are these for kids? I mean, they're, just, they're like, pretty graphic and, and should be, like, adult rated, you know? It's just, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. You mean, like, the scream masks yeah, scream with, like, masks the blood and, tears, and like, the, you know, like, sick thing? Yeah, all that. It's just, it's wicked, you know? Yeah, yeah. If I have kids, never, I'm never going to let them participate in halloween yeah it, frankly if i would try to get them homeschooled to be perfectly honest and see, i might have to yeah. move from the u.s because the u.s they're gonna like force your kids to go to these homo training classes they're gonna shove them. yeah well it's like you know if i ever have kids i, I don't plan i don't plan on having kids but if i ever do have kids i, I would definitely homeschool them i i you know i, I don't you know i mean see, like, because obviously i go to public school and obviously i just I, I ignore the indoctrination but like i firsthand experience i like seeing how much indoctrination i've seen it's just like i i don't i'm not sending like my kids are not setting foot anywhere near there yeah, at, at my school, you know, at my school, it's the same thing. And the thing is, they openly, all the teachers openly attack Christianity. Yeah. And they openly, you know, they say like, oh, God's not real. Oh, well, we're in yeah. this new age of rationality and stuff like that. Yeah, and they, exactly. You know, I, I mean, you know, they have. Yeah. The public school has. Oh, go on. Go on. I mean, I, I watched a really cool sermon where it was called like the Sodomite public school agenda or something like that and he made a good point like the preacher i think his name was jason cooley he made a good point he says that you know the sodom agenda is just one aspect i mean you don't have i mean we could go through the anti-god agenda the evolution agenda you know the darwinist agenda all that kind of stuff like the like the halloween agenda like, this is all, all kinds of things that are wrong with the public school the thing and the thing with evolution is there's no, there's all these missing links. There's absolutely yeah. no evidence that, yeah. you know, a fish can turn into, you know, a dog through millions of years. That's completely ridiculous. Yeah. There's no evidence for that. And I they, mean, they yeah. proclaim it like it's, like it's a fact. No one's proven it. Even Darwin said that there was yeah. tons of mistakes with his own theory. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, here's the thing is that the reason why uh evolution is pushed in public because obviously satan runs the public schools and as long as you're not worshiping the god of the yep. bible he's happy i mean as long as you're just not worshiping the god of the bible as long as you're like you know, he doesn't care what god you worship as long as you're not worshiping the god of the bible he's happy you know he's pleased yeah yeah no, i mean it's evolution is a direct attack on genesis yeah. and it's attacking the you know the sacred um the sacredness of humanity yeah. Like we weren't, you know, we weren't created from some single cell organism that randomly mutated over millions of years. We were created in the image of God. Yeah, exactly. So that's, that's why, that's directly what it's attacking. I think exactly. it's also, yeah, as exactly. you said, pushing people away. Oh yeah, you just cut off. Oh, uh, I was saying, before I was saying it was, it's teaching people to believe like their ancestors were monkeys or just yeah. like random fish creatures that mutated instead of we were created in the image of God. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny. I mean, think about it when you debate atheists on this, I guess I've debated atheists on this. It's like, they're, I find that they're just so prideful that like whenever, whenever you prove them wrong, they get all angry. They show insults at you because it's like, they think they're always right. And whenever you show them that they're wrong, they get mad. So it's like, they're very prideful. Many of them. Yeah, I yeah, know that they're, they're really, you know, the, these pretentious science atheists that will just believe anything someone with a lab coat is saying at face value without looking into it at all. Yeah, I mean, it's just like a cult. It's just like a cult. They don't yeah, exactly. think for themselves. Yeah, they'll just say, oh, this this fancy PhD said it. So it must be true. Yeah. And also they're taking it. They're taking their word by faith. Yeah. So. So it's funny they'll say, "Oh yeah, you 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 crazy creationist, you believe by faith." Well, you do too. You you're trusting whatever that scientist says, so you believe him by faith. You're having faith in him too. Exactly. I mean, they 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 have faith in so many things, yeah. or they 
presuppose so many things, as yeah. I say. Yeah. And and yet they criticize Christians for it. I mean, yeah. even if, as I said before, just to begin with, you have to presuppose that this world is the real world. Because for all atheists know, this world could be an illusion or could be a simulation. Yeah. So they have to take it on faith that this is the real world. Yeah, and thing is so, that even if they do have proof for evolution, they have to have faith that that proof is right. So it's like they're still having faith regardless. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but when you use their logic again, the best way to debate them is to use their own logic against them. Yeah. And then once they're totally, you know, baffled, then they just start hurling insults at you. Yeah, exactly. Because because like they, because the thing is, is that they always want to be right. And whenever they're proven to be wrong, they get all angry, basically. Yeah, I mean, I, I've talked to many atheists at my school and none of them, none of them can can contest the point when I say when you make any moral statement, because I love using this argument because I've never met an atheist who really refuted them unless they were a complete nihilist. When I when they make any moral statement, they assume they presuppose that good and evil even exists. But since you can't prove that, uh, they just. Oh, you just cut it out again. Oh, dang. Uh, so what I was saying is they can't even prove good and evil exists. So they can't make those sorts of arguments if they're logically consistent. Because then they're making an argument that's not based on rationality, but rather faith yeah. or their own subjective judgment. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it, one thing I like to – like I always like to use against atheists is that they – you know this little meme I keep seeing around? Like, oh, you know, Christians, you know – you can kill me and stuff, and I, I'll stop. I, will, I won't stop believing God. But atheist, you know, I'll change my beliefs if you show me evidence. But then it's funny when it, I, I saw a funny like meme to counter that that said that you know, yeah, you believe in evidence, but whenever that evidence points towards God, you just refuse to believe it. So it's like they have, they, they only want evidence if it doesn't lead to God. If that evidence proves God, they they just reject it. So they don't believe in evidence. They only want evidence that disproves God. So shows the kind of spirit they're of. Yeah. Yeah, another another really good argument against atheism is most atheists don't believe that any soul exists. Yeah. Now the problem with that is they also believe that humans have free will. Yeah, exactly. Now here's the contradiction: the human or a person is just a bunch of, in their worldview, it's just a bunch of cells, you know, um, bio, biochemical responses, you know, electrons firing, stuff like that. Yeah. So really, if, if you break it down with science, as they like to do it, here, here's what happens in a human mind. It receives stimuli, there's a chemical reaction, and then there's what the person decides to do. So using their worldview, you'll find that there's actually no such thing as free will. It's just a bunch of chemical responses that are yeah. predetermined. But then atheists will say that there is free will. Yeah. But in the Christian worldview, we have souls. A soul yeah. is an external force beyond the biology. So yeah, that's exactly. where humans get their free will. Yeah, exactly. And atheists just yeah, they just can't contest that point. Yeah. They have to they have to admit that they're wrong. Here's the thing is another another good thing I like to use against atheists is they'll say that, you know, why does God let wicked people do wicked things? But then they'll say, but you know, I want my free. So they'll tell like they'll, they'll say that, oh yeah, why doesn't God give you know God should give us free will? But then they'll say, oh why does God let wicked thing people do wicked things? Uh, because they have free will. So like you know, you want free will, but then you want God to control. Exactly. So contradict. Yeah, they contradict themselves again. It's like you want God to stop wicked yeah, people, remember, but then you uh, want God to give you free will. It's like you can't have both. Yeah, as I said, the, the standards will change just to suit the argument. Yeah. But there's no consistent worldview, or yeah. else there would be complete nihilists. Yeah. Because that's the end view of. Yeah. Well, this, I mean, really, yeah. when it comes down to it, there's two worldviews. There's there's the worldview that accepts the divine, a higher divine order, and then there's the secular, nihilistic, more relativistic, uh, you know, hedonistic material. Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, so uh, so there's the divine worldview and then the earthly worldview. Yeah. That's, the, that's it. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's uh, one, one of the best laws, I, or one of the best laws, of, like uh, scientific things I like to use um, to actually prove God and like just refute atheism is the law of cause and effect, where it states that every created object, oh, yeah. Yeah, every created object would have to have 
you know has a cause so in order for that object to be created the one that created it would have to would have to be infinite and have no cause or else it or else it would need a cause itself so that would mean that exactly that, that basically anything anything finite proves the infinite which means that everything is proof of god because the thing that the, the thing that created those objects would have to have the infinite and self you know self creating or also would have to have a cause itself so that you know basically everything is proof of god that that's how i like to put it yeah yeah I, i've seen that argument before it's a good one yeah another argument well it's sort of the similar thing that i've never seen an atheist refute is um the cosmological laws i think that's what they're called mm -hmm. yeah so it, it's basically the same thing you know, like the the law of motion or the law of movement and then the law of contingency where there has to be a cause that caused something else to uh, be in motion and there can't be an infinite regress. It has to stop somewhere. Yeah. So it can't come out of nothing. So something beyond <clears throat> or something that started originally had to put all the things into motion. Yeah, exactly. So, and, and you know, that's the thing. So uh, look, like, it's funny how like the, the, the it's funny whenever, whenever you show these kind of, whenever you show these theories to atheists or these these laws of physics to atheists, they get all mad and you know start calling you names because you know they, it refutes their it just proves that God exists and like I said, whenever they whenever they show evidence of God, they get all mad because they you know that they want evidence but whenever it points to God, they don't want it. So honestly, I think I think for me the greatest I mean I, of course atheists won't take this but for me the greatest proof of God was. I mean, it's anecdotal, so it would be a logical fallacy to use it as an argument. But when I really started to believe, when I really started to read the Bible, I, I definitely felt different. And, you know, I, I had this ability to resist sin that I just didn't have before. Yeah, exactly. I think an atheist, of course, they just can't experience that. Yeah. But no, for me, I think that's what really vindicated my faith. Yeah, exactly. And when atheists try to try to like you know find contradictions in the in the Bible, they can't because you know the Bible says that you know he that is of God heareth God's word. But like so because they're not saved, they can't understand the word of God. So that's why they they say oh, look at all these contradictions because you know if they were saved they'd understand it. But because they're not saved, they don't you know they think they find contradictions, but they actually don't. Oh, also, I'd like to add um, to that same point. When they do find contradictions. It's never from the King James Bible. Yeah, it's exactly. usually from these newer versions. Yeah, it, it's like I, you know, some atheists will say that, oh, look at all the contradictions in the NFV. I'm like, yeah, I, I could, show, I, I would say back to them, yeah, I could show you some contradictions that you probably haven't noticed before. But like I say, show me a contradiction in the King James Bible. They can't do it. Yeah. Yeah, at my school, there's, I mean, there's a few kids that call themselves Christians, but they, they're not really Christian. So mostly the interactions I have regarding religion, it's usually just atheists or with atheists. Yeah. So I, for the most part, I know all their arguments and, you know, none of them, <clears throat> they haven't really refuted, you know, the core arguments proving the existence of God or for the existence of God. Yeah. They'll just say, you know, evolution, evolution. I can't believe you don't believe in science. That's yeah. basically it. It, it, it's kind of funny. I mean, I, I I'm actually a former atheist myself. I I used to be a former atheist. I mean, I, I sorry. Yeah, I, used to be, I was as well. Yeah, I used to, sorry. I said I used to be a former atheist. That's kind of bad bad grammar. I I used to be an atheist, so I actually like used to use all those arguments against God. So I I, I know a lot of their arguments and how how to refute them. Yeah, yeah. I I used to be an atheist as well back when, you know, I went to this cruddy non-denominational church that wasn't really serious when i really started to uh look into things i started to watch different debates on youtube i just i realized that <clears throat> basically the atheist worldview it's just it's just very hollow you know, yeah. there's no there's no metaphysical aspect it only leads to nihilism which would you know spell the end of spell the end for humanity yeah exactly yeah i mean it, it's that's basically it. I mean, they think we're just. And it's funny. Another good thing I like. I just thought of another good argument I like to use against atheists is how they make fun of the Bible for having talking snakes. Like, oh, your Bible is talking animals. But in their logic, humans are animals. So, and we talk too. So, in their logic, they believe in talking animals too. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, the thing is, that's that's not even something outrageous. You know, a talking animal. If yeah. God wanted to, he could make. You know, an, an inanimate object start talking. 
you know the the supreme creator of the universe can't yeah you know make these easy things happen yeah but i just think it's, it's uh yeah. it's not a very strong point from the atheists yeah but i just think it's funny how they make fun of the bible for having talking animals but then they think we're animals too and we talk so it's like you know exactly they, yeah. they think our ancestors were you know yeah. apes and you know microscopic organisms yeah, stuff so, like that yeah so in their logic they believe in talking animals too if you think about it in their like in their own logic yeah yeah but i think i think what really did it for me is just the realization as i've said many times just the realization that if you have a completely empirical a worldview and you completely adhere to rationality and just pure logic it'll always take you to nihilism and solipsism yeah which means that you can only verify the proof the, the only thing that you can verify exists is yourself and objectively morals and uh purpose doesn't exist that's the end that's the end goal of all atheism most atheists just don't look into it that enough uh, enough to reach that point yeah, exactly. And, and obviously, if you do show them this, all this evidence, then they get all mad and start calling you names. At that point, I just say back to them, hey, wait a second, insults are not arguments. You know, show me some real evidence. And usually at that point, when I get to like that argument with them, they just walk away all mad. So it's like, because they can't win, you know? Yeah, yeah. My, I, I've met a lot of atheists, and really the only arguments they have isn't it even against the existence of God. It's just... They try to, they'll, they'll find one, they'll cherry pick one verse out of context from the yeah. Bible. And they'll basically ask, ask me to explain it away. Yeah. But the reason why these things are so easy to refute is for, for virtually every verse in the Bible, there's, you know, there's some Christian who's, who's explained it the right way. You know, it, you know, yeah, for, exactly. for people whose speciality is, you know, apologetics, they know how to refute all these arguments. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean. I mean, uh, the thing about atheists is that they love to like, cherry pick verses out of context and, and, and like take verses that, you know, like that, that were not like, like written to the Christian and stuff that is written to the Christian. And, you know, like, like the thing is, is that they love to just take like every verse they try to use to, to you know, show contra quote unquote contradictions in the Bible. It's always verses out of context or, you know, stuff that, you know, is not written. Like it's, it's funny, it's funny how they love to cherry pick verses. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, um, a, re a really good book that I read, uh, let's see if I have, all right, I have it right here. A really good book that I read um, that really just dismantles the atheist worldview, it's called uh, Nihilism, the Root of Revolution of the Modern Age. I oh, think wow. it's just a really good book uh, contrasting, you know, the Christian and atheist worldview. Oh, I mean, it's, a, it's written by an Orthodox Christian, so I'm not, you know, it, it's not about theology. It's more so just about uh you know just just the different worldviews oh really yeah, but i'm not sure about that part oh, yeah a, a, a good thing i like to use like to refute evolution and all that kind of stuff is a, a little pamphlet called evolution cruncher you can get it like as a pdf online uh evolution cruncher it basically just goes through all the atheistic arguments like for evolution and just refutes them and shows how they're full of holes yeah yeah just just like the atheist worldview it's, yeah. it's totally inconsistent yeah it when you really break it down it's... yeah it, it like it contradicts itself and you know, all that kind of stuff it's just it's very inconsistent yeah yeah a total a totally logical and um and yeah a totally logical and consistent atheist in their philosophy will just reach the conclusion that nothing matters and you know they can only verify the existence of themselves i don't yeah. keep repeating this but it's just yeah. it's just the best argument yeah, exactly. I, um, and and it, I find that whenever an atheist comes to that conclusion, they'll either turn to God, knowing that you know, knowing that He's real, or they'll just you know, like you said, believe that you know, just like just whatever you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, once they reach that point, they're either going to accept that there's some higher divine being, and hopefully they'll turn to Christianity, yeah. or they'll just embrace they'll just embrace the void, embrace nihilism, yeah. and then they'll just become hedonists and materialists. Yeah basically just you know basically just live and worship pleasure until you die yeah and then they and if to... everyone lived like that society would just fall apart yeah exactly and then they die and of course they go to hell and then at that point they believe there's a god now at that point they'll believe there's a god yeah i mean they, they know they'll only figure it out when it's too late it's really yeah. just a matter of saving yeah exactly i mean i, mean, I couldn't i couldn't care less 
if I win a debate on the internet. It's yeah. really about saving them from their own, you know, empty worldview, yeah, exactly. essentially satanic worldview. Yeah, exactly. I mean, for example, you know, like I see, like, you know, all these people who make videos about Stephen Hawking being in hell and that kind of stuff, and atheists get all mad and that kind of stuff and say, oh, I approve you, there's God. But, you know, even if you do approve them, there's a God. If they don't turn to the Christian God, they're still going to hell. And, you know, exactly yeah and it's funny i i said or not really funny i keep saying that but i i said one time that you know stephen hawking he's in hell and i'm, sh I'm sure that i imagine that he's more of a, i i said that i imagine that he's a believer now more than anybody and that got a lot of people very mad yeah i mean you know at that point it's too late that's yeah it's too late but you know at that point they probably believe they probably believe harder than anybody now at that point but you know it's too late yeah, the biggest thing is just their pride. Yeah, if they exactly. could just stop being so prideful, yeah, and exactly. they could be more open-minded. Yeah, and I think they would yeah. definitely come could come to. Yeah, they're just so prideful. It's like they never. They think it's that they never want to admit they're wrong. It's like whenever you prove them wrong, they get all mad and trying to like refute you. It's like they just never want to admit they're wrong. Yeah. Also, also, I would just say I would say look at every. Well, I would say two things. The correlation between all the decadence in the modern world, like all the all the value, all the, you know, traditional family values just going down the drain and the decline of Christianity. Yeah, and exactly. look at also, you know, drug addiction, you know, increasing suicide rates, increasing divorce rates. You know, all these people are being homos. Yeah, it exactly. basically vindicates Christianity. Yeah. It, it, it's like it's funny like i saw some some atheist uh you know he claimed to be a, a pansexual and he literally just uh called like he was you know talking about the this this make america straight again conference that uh steven anderson and some of the other guys are holding and he literally uh called for their channels to be shut down and he called on his followers to troll their channels he didn't refute any of their arguments he just says hey go and troll their channels and you know he says i think you know i want youtube to shut these guys down so it's like they're not open to the dialogue they just want to shut down if, if you ask him if you ask him um you know what's so good about being a homo he, he's gonna say well you know it's human rights you should respect people's opinions yeah. and then that's when you can immediately go to the argument that as soon as they make any sort of moral statement they presuppose the existence of good and evil and according to their worldview that shouldn't even exist because you can't prove it so yeah and it's also i like to say that you know it's funny they'll, they'll say we have to respect their opinions but yet they don't respect ours and they want to shut down so it's like you know double a double standard there yeah yeah I mean, that's just a given they're always going to have double standards they're always going to be yeah. inconsistent yeah that's why that's why the best way to refute them is to hold them to their own standards yeah. and use their logic, you know, against them. Yeah. Because if we were to go through all their double standards, we'd be here for a while. If we were to go through, like, all the double standards they have. Yeah. Yeah. Also, uh, about the movie thing that we were talking about before. Yeah. I remember a few days ago, I just sat down with a friend and we watched this movie and, you know, we're older in high school. So now we're looking back at it and we just started realizing all these you know, all these hidden messages in the movie or all these themes that we wouldn't realize as children. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you watch, you know, the Marvel superhero films, well, I, I, I was yeah. to a really good sermon by Jason Cooley where he actually detailed the fact that Marvel and DC, these superheroes, they basically are just pagan gods that are just, you know, being like, like turned into superheroes. That's all they are. They're just pagan gods. Yeah. I mean, I mean, in the, in the superhero universe, it's just a bunch of, you know, as you said, you know, all these weird gods from these, you know, mythologies that are sort of mashed together. Yeah. So it, it's vindicating uh, the pagan worldview that there's all these, you know, pantheons of gods, and, you know, people with crazy magic powers flying around. Yeah, exactly. Magic powers, you know, teaching sorcery too with all these magic powers and that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, there's several of the superheroes that use magic. Yeah. <laughs> And, it's, and, and you know, know yeah, that's it's thing. just like occultism. Yeah, that's all it is. It's just paganism and occultism. You know, we pack I mean, have have you seen Doctor Strange? Well, I haven't seen it, and I'm sure a lot of haven't. You know, from what I can tell about it, it's just full of paganism and, and witchcraft and sorcery. Yeah, I mean the, you know, the spells that he casts looks exactly like, it, it's using like occultist satanic symbolism. Yeah. Basically, the whole plot of the film is just, <clears throat> it's um. 
Yeah, it's it's just like an attack on Christianity, basically. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's interesting how you, I've seen Christians that they'll preach against things like Harry Potter and preach against Hollywood, but yet they let their kids watch Marvel and Disney films, which are, you know, just as bad. But, you know, it's weird how they'll preach against Hollywood and Harry Potter and that kind of stuff. But, yeah, they let, let the kids watch Disney and Marvel. Um, you know, they're not consistent. Yeah, also, you know, also the fact that all these Marvel films have all this politically correct nonsense thrown in, well, and, you know, just as a sprinkle on top. Not to mention how the females are, are just very scantily dressed, too. Exactly, yeah. They're, they're all dressed like promiscuous women. They're all scantily oh, yeah. clad. Yeah. They're all, you know, super alpha and not feminine. They actually act super masculine, you know, and they're rebellious and they're rowdy and they're arrogant. Yeah, exactly. You know, things yeah. like that. Yeah, it's it's just you know. So it's teaching it's teaching women to reject their natural, you know, their their natural um, behavior and duty, you know, as ordained by God. Yeah, exactly. And uh, again, you know, why is this being marketed to kids? Because they want to turn them into, you know, these, uh, like like all these child actors. You know, I compared how these these child actors, uh, how they are when they're kids, and they're you know they're quite decent, and now today they're just like these like these these whores and you know these fags and everything like that it's just you know it, it turns them into you know and, and these parents you know like i said they take their kids to church once a week and they hear all this preaching but it just, it just goes in one ear and out the other because they're filling their mind with all this this uh hollywood you know garbage every, every yeah all this secular crap yeah 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 it's because um kids you know kids are the most impressionable and they just want to get them when they're young because when you're yeah. an adult you can think for yourself and you can rationalize, but kids, they just take it, everything they see at face value, which is why the indoctrination is so effective when it's marketed towards kids. Yeah. And it's kind of funny. I'm not sure if you heard about this, but over in Britain, uh, like these Muslims are, basically, oh, yeah. are, are protesting this, this school uh, who is teaching the kids about homosexuality. And then I see these conservatives actually arguing in favor of the school teaching homosexuality to kids because they're trying to score points against Islam. It's like since when the conservatives uh, favor that kind of stuff, it's like it's like they'll do anything to score. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, uh, honestly, I'd say that I'd say the Islamic fundamentalists are even more preferable than the secular, you know, kosher conservatives. Yeah. Even them are more more preferable because at least they'll stand for some traditional values. Yeah, I mean, I mean, despite worshiping Satan. Yeah, I mean, I mean obviously them. they worship a false pagan moon deity known as Allah. But, you know, like, they're at least somewhat more decent. Like, these conservatives, I mean, they're becoming just as wicked as the Democrats. And it's like how it's like how they're actually supporting homosexuality being taught to kids, you know, just because a bunch of Muslims, Muslims, are just protesting against it. It's like, you know, it's insane. Uh, the, this YouTube Google Hangout show, and she was basically a stripper. Like, she... Like, you know, she had the cleavage showing on her YouTube channel. She was, like, doing this, you know, provocative, disgusting dance. Yeah. And she was coming out saying that, oh, my husband supports my, – my husband's a real Christian conservative. He supports traditional values, something like that. You know, totally fo- – you know, they're, they're phony conservatives. They're phony Christians. Yeah. I, I mean, exactly. I mean, you know, these, these – I, I call them conservatives. I mean – you know, it's, yeah, they are cucks. Well, they are cucks. I mean, they're in my opinion, they're just as cucked as the liberals. I mean, they use terms like you know, anti-Semitic. You know, you're misogynistic, homophobic. I mean, they're using yeah. the, they're using all these same liberal buzzwords, but they're supposed to be like the alternative to liberals. I don't think so. Exactly. No, liberals. Liberals will cry all day about you yeah. know, you're homophobic, you're racist, yeah. you're xenophobic, whatever. And conservatives will cry all about. You know, you're anti-Semitic, and then they'll also say you're homophobic, you're xenophobic, you're racist. Yeah, it, it, it's it's like you know, these conservatives. It's like if you don't basically worship, you know, the the so you know these these blood sucking Israelis. If you don't worship them, or oh, you're anti-Semitic. You know, if you don't if you don't want to pledge exactly. allegiance, if you don't want to pledge allegiance to them to a foreign nation, or oh, you're just anti-Semitic. I guess I one funny video of this um. This Laura Loomer, uh, I, I don't know much about her, but oh no, yeah, she ha- she's such a wicked person. I know she's she. I mean, you know, she's she's made some good points, but she's very wicked. Uh, you know, she's she claims to be Jewish, but she held this sign that said that you know 
boycotting Israel equals anti-Semitism. So she's basically saying that boycotting Israel for any reason, doesn't matter what reason it is, is anti-Semitism. It's like, okay, so what is Israel? Yeah, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter that Israel's literally blowing the brains out of little Palestinian kids. Yeah. You know, they're, they're totally immaculate, according to yeah. this Laura Loomer. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, she, you know, she has done, you know, she made some good points. And it's also funny how she complains about censorship but yet she actually tries to get, you know, she cl- she actually tries to get people on the far right k- kicked off Discord. So it's like she openly admits yeah, this too. Yeah, she did. Yeah, it, it's like how how can she she the- ran a doxing website for yeah. people on the supposed far right, which yeah, exactly. both of us both of us would probably be categorized in that way. Yeah, exactly. Because you know we're we're real Christians. We're not these kosher Christians. Yeah, we're not we're not these these you know Christians who worship these you know so called. Christ coming one of the Johnny come lately Jews over in Israel, you know, we're actually real Christians. Yeah, yeah I, I don't understand how they say they're the chosen people. Yep. They, they betrayed, they betrayed Jesus Christ, and they still don't believe in him. Yeah, and actually, their book, the Talmud, says that he's boiling an excrement. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny because they love to rip verses from the Old Testament out of context. But yeah, if they actually read the New Testament, it goes on and on about how, you know, being in Christ makes you the seed to be. Like the book of Galatians chapter 3 talks about, you know, you, your being in Christ makes you the seed to be Abraham. You're the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus, all that kind of stuff. It's like they, I've never heard them quote these verses. They, they avoid them like the plague. They love, they love just rip verses from the Old Testament talking about, oh, you know, a blessing that blessed you. Oh, Christ. also. Yeah. Oh, I was going to mention that. Another thing that really – um. A really good argument. I mean, it's not really an argument, just a thing that I thought about that, you know, gave credence to Christianity was when I started looking into Bible prophecy, it seems like the Bible is actually very accurate on certain things. What well, one thing being the mark of the beast. Yeah. I think that definitely foretold foretold, you know, microchips being implanted in people yeah. where they're gonna use it for wireless transactions. Yeah, exactly. Things of that nature. Also the one world government. Yeah. And there's you- gonna be a a fake yeah. savior, which yeah, is actually and, going to be the Antichrist, and like you know, which ca- you can see the yeah. world is moving towards that. Yeah, and like you know, like a cashless society. Like I was at Walmart just one week ago, and they actually had got rid of like twenty cashiers, and like this thing where like they won't ex- like I was at Walmart. They have these machines that basically don't accept cash; they only accept credit cards. So it's like we're we're moving towards a cashless society, like the Bible says. Yeah, yeah, and it's. Yeah, as I said, the mark of the beast could just be, you know, because because in the biblical times, people didn't even know, you know, they had no conception of this sort of technology. Yeah, exactly. So the fact that they could foresee that you would receive a mark, you know, on on your forehead or on your right hand, and you would need it to, you know, buy and sell things. Yeah. You know, that's I think that totally vindicated Christianity because there's no way they could have predicted that. Yeah, exactly. You know that sort of technology. Mm-hmm. If I, I mean, one of the things I, that's actually one of the things I like to use against atheism is I actually show them that you know, like for example, if you take the Quran, like there's not a single prophecy of the Quran that has come true so far, but pretty much from the Bible, there's tons of stuff that are being fulfilled that I could say like that are pretty accurate, be, accurately being fulfilled right now that the Bible predicted would happen. So that that kind of you know, all the more proof of God, you know. Yeah, exactly. No, no other religion has, you know you know, of prophecies in their scripture that are even remotely true. I, I don't even know what Islam has, but, you know, well, if yeah. they had anything that came through, people would be talking about it, but no yeah, one exactly. is. And, and one thing I've, I've noticed about Christianity that makes it different, different from all the religions is that every single religion teaches a works-based salvation, like you have to work your way to heaven, which is Christianity is the only religion that teaches salvation just by faith, basically. Every single religion teaches work salvation. Yeah, also, also when Jesus was, or in, in, in Christianity, Jesus was actually seen by thousands upon thousands of yeah. people. And, you know, people saw him being crucified and people saw him rise from the dead. Yeah. Now, where did, where did Muhammad or Buddha get their revelations? Well, Muhammad got his revelation in some cave. Yeah, exactly. Okay, with no witnesses, of course. And Buddha got his revelation, you know, sitting at some tree alone. Yeah. So there's no witnesses. Yeah, exactly. And, um, yeah, well, yeah, they got no witnesses, which is for Jesus, you know, and, you know, like for the stuff that happens in the Bible, there's always tons of witnesses with people writing it down, all that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, 
obviously they're all dead now, so you just can't go ahead and ask them, but, you know, there were, were obviously witnesses that saw it happen. Yeah, and, and there was tons of, like, in the in the first through third uh, centuries, when all the Christians were being persecuted by the Roman Empire, all the people who had seen Jesus, they refused to, they refused to renounce their faith, and they yeah. got thrown in, you know, these arenas where they were mauled to death by lions and killed in other horrible ways. Yeah. But since they'd seen Jesus, they weren't willing to renounce their faith. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fun fact about Nero, he, the, the Roman Empire that persecuted the Christians, he was actually a homosexual, by the way. Fun fact about him, he was a homosexual. <laughs> oh, yeah. But before the Roman Empire collapsed, there was a lot of art depicting oh, yeah. those sorts of the relationships. Roman Empire and the Greeks, you know, like the... Yeah, the Greeks, they were a bunch of fags. I mean, they were just full of that kind of stuff. Exactly. It, it's the same cycle every single time. Yeah. It's it, it's these empires that reject God, they always move towards, you know, complete decadence, you know, yeah. no morals, and then they collapse. It's yeah. the same thing. I, I see the same thing happening with the U.S. I honestly don't think it's going to make it for the next. Well, exactly. I, I always say that here's the thing. When you take God out, guess who comes in? Satan. That's what happens when you take God out of exactly. the schools. That's what comes in. Basically. I mean, just, just look at every every single atheist country. Look, look at the most atheist countries on earth, and you'll see that every single one of them is totally, totally evil. Yeah. Like, for example, you know, North Korea, where they have the Stalinist totalitarianism. Yeah. You know, Russia, which was formerly the Soviet Union. Yeah. I mean, Orthodox Christianity has sort of yeah. come back. But just look what, you know, all the abortions in Russia, all the prostitution, yeah. all the poverty, even though they have a big military, all the corruption. Yeah. Um, you know, look at the Western European countries where they have all these homos marching in the streets. Yeah. They're letting in, you know, the Muslim invaders that are totally slaughtering them. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, you can see what, what atheism leads to. Yeah, exactly. And it's funny. I read this weird, I, I, not weird. I read this interesting article that said that Hungary and Poland are the quote, homophobia capitals of Europe. And I was like, okay, why is that the case? Well, it's because they're mostly Catholic. So they're just a bunch of pagans basically. That that's that's you know that's their quote homophobia. They're just a bunch of pagans. Really, I didn't... Poland well, is mostly Catholic. Yeah, Poland Poland is very very Catholic, uh, which you know in some ways would explain uh, that's, why. That's a shame. Well, yeah, it, obviously, yeah, you know, much, but you know, because Roman Catholics are just pagans. But uh, it, it said that that Poland and Hungary, because of their high Catholic population, are like very hostile to uh, fags. Basically, they're very hostile to them. Um, but it's interesting how they're so hostile to them, but yet it's still legal. So it's kind of interesting right there. Yeah, the, the thing is Catholicism, it's it's like a house of cards. It's yeah. not real Christianity. Yeah. It, it's just going to collapse and they're going to turn to atheism. What, have, have you seen the rates of, out of all the Christian denominations, Catholics are the ones that mostly turn to atheism. When yeah, you exactly. see all these atheists, when you see all these atheists, they're always like, oh, I was a former Catholic. Yeah. Now you know why. Now you it, know why it, they, it, they yeah, shouldn't. exactly. It's like they'll say that, oh, look at all the contradictions in Christianity. Yeah, well, Catholicism has tons of contradictions, but Catholicism is not Christianity, though. So, you know, I, I you know. Exactly. Pretty, yeah. I mean, it's, it's the not, biggest contradiction yeah. with Catholicism that I haven't seen a single Catholic refute is their doctrine of, uh, their doctrine that whatever the Pope says is you know, is correct. You yeah, know, the exactly. Pope's infallible. Yeah. yeah, because the Pope's contra because he he's constantly contradicting other popes. So it's like, you know, it doesn't make sense. Exactly. Like this Pope, this Pope says, you know, uh, I, I'm I'm not sure what his doctrine is on homos, but he's more accepting of them than the previous Pope. Mm. So there you go. The Church just made a 180 degree turn on that specific issue. So there's no con. Right. Exactly. It's funny because. He was pro-homosexual. Then I read this article about how the Pope came out and said that the whole sex abuse problem. Oh, you know, he said hell does. Oh yeah, he said hell doesn't exist. It's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, I think the Pope, Pope Francis, actually accused someone of twisting his words. But I wouldn't be surprised if he actually said that. If he said hell doesn't exist, because you know uh -huh. you have all these. You know, child molesters, and they're they're always they're always from the Catholic Church. They're Wait. never from any other denomination. Yeah, exactly. They're always from the Catholic Church. You know, these these child molesting priests. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think you know that's the thing. And here's the thing: if you do a history on Catholicism, this kind of the perversion is not new in Catholicism. This has been going on for hundreds of years in Catholicism, like all this weird perversion. Um, because you know, yep. if the fruit, you know, 
because the Catholicism has bad roots, so therefore it's producing bad fruit. You know, a, you know, a corrupt tree can, can't produce good fruit. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. If you pour if if you pour gasoline near a tree and it sucks it all up, it's gonna be a yeah a pretty dead tree. Yeah. When, when you mix yeah, in, and also when you mix in Roman paganism with with biblical Christianity, the film the form this impure form of Christianity, it's not going to produce any good fruit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just I mean, who? But when you look at the Roman pagans, they are the ones that, you know, molested children and were into all this pedophilia. And yeah. then you see it transferred to a Catholicism. Yeah. And, and they wonder why. Yeah, I mean, I always say that Roman Catholicism is just simply a continuation of the pagan Roman Empire, but with just Christian titles to it. That's all it is. Because they, they basically, I mean, and the thing is, is that, like I'm saying before, that, you know, I believe that homosexuality, homosexuality is a form of occult worship because every single you know occultic religion has homosexuality as part of their ritual worship to their gods basically yeah yeah i totally agree yeah i think the reason why they do that is because homosexuality is like the ultimate form of rebellion against god in my opinion so as a way to kind of just like shake their fist at god they have homosexuality as like part of their ritual to their god you know, Satan, basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's definitely, it's, you know, it's, it's perverting the greatest, you know, it, most intimate relationship between two yeah. people, which is a man and a woman, you know, coming together to create a child. Yeah. Or just being married. It's a perversion of that. Yeah. It's the ultimate rebellion against God. And in my opinion, actually, no, I, I kind of take that back. I, I think that the the one that's the only one that's higher than homosexuality in terms of rebellion is transgenderism. I think that's even higher form of rebellion in my oh, opinion. Oh yeah, def oh that's definitely worse because it I mean it is homosexuality, but it's homosexuality where the person also mutilates themselves and yeah. deludes themselves. Yeah. So it's it's like it's like and unsurprisingly, you know, many of these uh, you know, the like cultic, you know, like Alistair Crowley, he was actually a, a homosexual. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, and, you know, the children are going to be seeing this and then, you know, their parents are encouraging them to, you know, accept this sort of stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In fact, that's, that's what they did at my school. They had this man and, you know, he he had like, you know, the, um, what do they call it when that when the girls like darken the area around their eyes? What do you mm. call that? I don't know. Okay, well, you know, it, it was clearly a man, like in a dress, and you know, he had all this, you know, feminized stuff, and they were basically saying, if you don't accept this, then you know, you're some sort of intolerant bigot. Yeah. So you know, they're indoctrinating everyone at my high school to believe that sort of stuff. Yeah, ba and you can't say yeah. anything bad about it. Yeah, without but, repercussions. Yeah. Well, basically, they, they get you to feel bad for the poor gay people and get you to be mad at the vicious homophobes who, who insult them, basically. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, have, having their feelings hurt in this life is nothing compared to what they will experience, yeah. you know, once they die. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, having their feelings hurt, I mean, there's nothing. I mean, and plus, it's like, I just said, like, really? Because someone hurt their little feelings, they have to go tell the principal. I mean, I mean, you gotta learn to be a bit more tough in society. I mean, society can't just cater to your feelings, you know? You gotta learn to be a bit more tough and just shake the insult, you know? Exactly, exactly. And, yeah. like, a few decades ago, if you call someone a fag, they're just gonna, just gonna be like, whatever, who cares? You know, they'll brush it off. You know, that's when men were masculine. That's yeah. when men were acting like the way God created them to act. Yeah, actually, act and now right. they're acting, you know. Yeah, now they're acting all effeminate, and you know, yeah. you know where that leads to. Yeah, it lead, yeah, it leads the gateway to it, and, and also, you know, it's funny. I read this weird manual by this uh, pro homosexual advocacy group, where they basically says that oh, or said they said that sorry, bad grammar. They said that um, anti-gay slurs uh, include. That's so gay. I'm like, really? You're offended by that so gay? I mean, like, like you said that, oh, saying, calling someone, say, or saying that's so gay could make someone feel unsafe. I'm like, if that makes you feel unsafe, then, you know, you're a pretty wimpy person. I mean, uh, just imagine how unsafe they're going to be feeling, you know, when they're burning in the lake of fire. Oh, yeah, I yeah. think a little bit of insult or, you know, condemning them right in their face is a lot less severe than you know what's in store for them yeah 
and obviously I, I get no joy out of them just burning in hell, but you know, that that's ultimately, you know, if, it, if that's ultimately where they're going to go. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, you know, and obviously I feel bad, I feel bad for anyone who, um, who is like indoctrinated into that kind of stuff. But I, I believe that, you know, these yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's worse than any human can imagine and it's eternal. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't wish hell upon my worst enemy. I mean, it's, it's a horrific place. And the worst part is that's for all of eternity. I think that's, that's the worst part is that it goes on for eternity. It doesn't end. Yeah. Yeah, the, you know, the people who know they're going there, who, you know, just worship Satan, and they're just willingly dragging down as many people as they can. Yeah. It's like, you know, these Hollywood celebrities, like a good example of this would be Robin Williams, who, you know, I, I've, oh, I, gee. I mean, he, he was wicked. I mean, he, he, he talked to demons. He did, he did all kinds of wicked films and, you know, just like how, you know, you know how Judas, you know, how Satan entered, in, entered into Judas. And of course, once Satan was done using Judas, mm -hmm. Judas hung himself. Well, guess what? Once Satan was done using Robin Williams, he hung himself. So. Yeah. Yeah. He just, he just killed him. He killed himself because he sorrowed. He, he he basically was sorrowing over what he'd become. It wasn't godly sorrow. It was it was sorrow of the world. And um, you know he died and went to hell. Obviously. Yeah, I, I feel like it's the same thing with, you know, uh, with, with Hollywood, the movie industry. All, if if you want to make it big, you basically have to. Yeah, and it was like, you know. To be honest, I mean, he, he made people laugh at God. He mocked at God on when he was on Earth. But, you know, there's no jokes in hell. There's no, no laughing in hell. There's no mocking at God in hell. Only torment for all eternity. Yeah. Have, have you seen a movie called, um, I think it's called uh, Deus Ex Machina? Never heard of that's it. what it's called. It's basically about this, this guy and he talks to this robot. Which uh, tricks him into believing that the robot's actually real, and then, yeah, because it's so convincing, even though it's just an imitation of life. And then what ends up happening is the robot frames him for a murder, and it runs away. So you know, pushing you know pushing the transhumanist, you know, anti anti human agenda. Yeah, and, and you know, you know that's the thing is is Hollywood. I would say that Hollywood hates God. You know, I hate Hollywood because they hate God. So. Um, that's kind of thing. I, I would never, I, you know, I, I hadn't watched Hollywood ever since I got rid of it, you know? Yeah. If, if I were to watch one of those filthy movies, I would pirate it online Yeah. and I would only watch it for the purposes of refuting it and yeah, exposing exactly. it. I, I mean, I, I'd pirate it too. I'm not going to give Hollywood my money. I, I would, I would just pirate it. Exactly. And I honestly, I don't, I don't care about the pirating laws. I really don't. Yeah. Like that, you know, God's law is more important than any, you know, stupid yeah. copyright law. And I'm not giving money to Hollywood, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm not going to give money to Hollywood, you know, because they hate God. So I'm not going to give money to them. Yeah, the thing, you, you know, the, the thing there's with all these Hollywood films is at the end of the movie, they always leave you with this feeling that there's... You know, um, that every everything that you can experience is on this earth. There's nothing beyond. It's all yeah. about, you know, the material, the earthly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's all, always like that. Yeah, the, there's never been a single Hollywood film where it's like, um, you know, the, the ending of the film or, or the, the protagonist has this realization that God is real and that culminates in the ending of the film. It's never like that. It's always the opposite, in fact. Mm hmm and you know, it's like it's eating. Whenever Hollywood does make a you know quote unquote Bible film, it's always a perversion of the actual story. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they always, they always, yeah, yeah. As you said, they they either totally get the story wrong and they add a bunch of pagan occultist nonsense to it, yeah. And they teach you know heretical stuff, yeah. Or it's just like a straw man against Christianity, yeah. Exactly, or it's like if you, if you watch, you know that film Son of God that came out in 2014? I've heard of it, but I didn't watch oh, yeah. it. I mean, I, I, I haven't watched it. From, from what I've, I've done some research on it, from what I can tell, it basically teaches a new age Christ. That's all it does. It doesn't teach the biblical Jesus. Okay, so so it's basically the Antichrist. Yeah, it teaches, it teaches a new age Christ. And, and also, mm -hmm. they, they change a lot of the stuff. Like, for example, 
it, Jesus says, oh, I'm going to change the world. It's like Jesus didn't come to change the world. He came to save souls. But they say, oh, I'm going to change the world, like this New Age stuff. Yeah, as, as I said, uh, the theme in every single one of those movies, it's out with the old, in with the new. Yeah. That's, uh, that's always the theme. The theme is always about you know, progressivism and change and things like that. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Yeah, I'm trying to think of more movies that I've watched that I just remembered. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, the thing about Hollywood is that, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought, darn it. <laughs> you, ever get, you ever get that time where you just, like, you're going to say something uh, and you just forget what you're going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, I always have that where I have this brilliant thought and then it's... And just like you just forget about it. It's like it's, it's so annoying. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, let's see. It was about movies. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, backtrack and try to remember? What... Oh, we're talking about like Hollywood promotes like this out with the old and with the new, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Just about you know change, destroying tradition, stuff like that. Yeah. That, that's how they. That's how they program the kids to be able to accept all this. You know stuff that they know is wrong, but you know it's it's presented as new and you know revolutionary. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's it's like I'm trying so I'm trying to find something to eat. I'm kind of hungry, but you know that's all it is. It's all just about you know. I mean, I mean, here's the thing. I always say that if God hates it, they promote it. Yeah, exactly. Every message that they promote, if you believe the opposite, then you know you're doing well. Yeah, it, it's like it, it's it's like they promote whatever God hates. So it's like if they know God hates something, they'll promote it. You know, it, it's you know, that's the thing. I mean, all, all these, you know how all these comedy movies are rated R because yeah. they have all this explicit stuff. Yeah. Exactly. I mean that that's even in the comedy movies. You know, yeah. you know, in, in the fantasy movies or in the science fiction movies, they're always pushing this you know, insane sorcery nonsense. But even yeah. in the comedy movies, yeah. they can't make it where it's just wholesome, you know, family-friendly comedy. It always has to be, you know, super explicit, full yeah. of drugs, full of promiscuity, yeah, all the things kind of, of that stuff. nature. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even in some of, like, the kids' movies now that are coming out, you know, I, I've seen some PG-rated films that I think should have been rated R. I mean, they're pretty violent, some of these kids' films. Yeah, I think they should be rated S for satanic. Yeah, probably. Or maybe A for Antichrist. Yeah. Yeah, or maybe R for reprobate. Maybe, yeah. Uh, or maybe F for faggoty. Who knows? Yeah, even better. Whoa, wait, hold on. I... Okay. Uh, okay, I gotta go in like five minutes. Okay. Uh, do you have anything else you want to say? I'm, I'm pretty much, I've, I've said everything. All right, uh, maybe I'll catch you tomorrow, all right? Or yeah, maybe later today. <laughs> yeah, sure. That sounds like a, uh, like a good idea. All right, well, it, a very interesting talk. Never, yeah, great chat. You know, never found someone who is, you know. Oh, yeah, you know, d ditto. Yeah, anyways, got to go now. See you later. <laughs> oh, fine. Sorry about that. Well, thank you for watching, everyone. That was um, fun. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Goodbye.